هذا هو اليوم الذي صنعه الرب فلنفرح ولنتهلل به المسيح قام من بين الاموات ووطي فلنفرح ووهب الحياة للذين في القبور مسيح قام من بين الأموات ووطئ الموت بالموت ووهب الحياة للذين في القبور مسيح قام من بين الأموات ووطئ الموت بالموت ووهب الحياة للذين في القبور كريستوس أنستي ابن كرون ثناة ثناة باتيساس Ti sentis ni masi zoif karisamenos. المسيح قام من بين الأموات وواطئ الموت بالموت. It's a words we say in Arabic, praising the Lord that He is risen. Today, we have hundreds of Christians who have been slaughtered, and they are risen with the Lord. We heard the news about Sri Lanka and how the filthy cowards they attack Christians praying in a church. But they are a living, lucky living, for they are granted to be with the Lord. So yes, Al Masih Qam. Al Masih, this is how we say the word in Arabic for the word Messiah. Qam, which means is risen. Through centuries and centuries, people did think that by killing Christians, they can stop Christianity. They think that if we attack Christians, slaughter Christians, we can be successful and Christianity will be demolished. Keep dreaming. Actually, Christianity is better when a Christian are discriminated. Christians are better when a Christians are discriminated, not the opposite. Killing 200, 300 Christians in the day of Easter will not demolish Christianity. Christianity will grow. It's the same as when you do trim the flowers. You think you made the branches shorter, but the fact the roses will grow and they will flourish. Not long time ago, they used to feed our church fathers to beasts and animals and they used them as a game for fun killing christians was fun but they fail they fail before they fail today and they will fail tomorrow and we are always victorious no matter how many churches you burn not long time ago a criminal, he attacked a mosque, and 50 Muslims, sadly, they got killed. The whole world cried for them for more than two weeks, the day, every day. The news have nothing to do except speaking about those 50. But I don't know why they don't remember. The hundreds and thousands of churches burned, destroyed to the ground. Tons of thousands of Christians killed, enslaved, and even expelled from their land. 
nobody wanna remember and our brothers in Sri Lanka I guarantee you they mention their name for five minutes in Fox News and then there will be history nobody will talk about them it's just a news uh, we arrive like an uh, action news uh, more than 200 Christians die in Sri Lanka I mean they are Christians why people will care they are Christians and they are poor and they are people of color which make it a three time more let us say <laughs> uh, uh, not important I mean you are poor and you are Christian and you have a color and then you want the news to talk about you right however we don't care for the news remembering the Christians being slaughtered they are remem remembered by us and by the Lord and this is what is important for us this is what is important for us they think those idiots by destroying or destroying it at a cross they think the cross is that piece of wood is going to demolish Christianity go ahead the cross my friend is beyond your reach is beyond your God your God the devil he cannot hurt our cross same time we have to be careful not to be hateful and not to hate the Muslims not to do what terrorists do we are still and we will stay the people of Christ who carry his orders love your enemy and don't curse them we are victorious because we follow Jesus not because we follow our temperament and anger if God is with me who could be against me and trust me I'm a person who is coming from the Middle East so I know what discrimination is all about and discrimination made me who I am discrimination did not make me a person who is ashamed to say I'm a Christian or to say I'm not going to handle this discrimination no more I'm going to join the cult of Islam discrimination made me a better Christian a real believer so my friend we are we are here to witness for his glory and time will come and he will witness for us he said the one who deny me I will deny him which means he will witness for you time will come and he will say those are my people and we will be with the Lord in case you do not know and let me see if I can find the news many cities who were occupied by Isis today they are coming to Christ as never before just two days ago I was reading about the city of Kobani and the Muslims were, were making articles attacking Kobani how Kobani denied Allah and how Kobani became Christian this video you see in the front of you this is for Muslims Kurdish Muslims who they decide to leave Islam because of Islam which mean what made them make a decision that they want to be out of this cult is Islam 
and they found that there's no one except the Messiah to be the true loving God so look what Isis did Isis came supposedly to destroy any other belief to demolish anyone who don't believe in Allah but Isis did not demolish anything except Islam because people then they saw the true face of Islam they used to see Islam in a way which is not exist a Muslim just a person supposedly his name is Muhammad this is not Islam many of you think Islam is a woman wearing hijab that is not even Islam hijab is not Islamic burqa is Islamic If you go and see those territories was occupied by Isis how Islam changed their life and make it better when I say Islam make their life better I mean they woke up because finally they saw the true Islam not Islam the one okay you can do whatever you wish that is not Islam remember Islam is a government not only a religion Islam is a political movement not only a cult Islam the purpose of Islam is power and to dominate government one world government and when Islam which is the government come everybody saw what Islam is about He said that is not Arabic the one who said that to you he is a certified donkey secondly how a Moroccan will translate to you from Arabic to English he is not an Arab he's a Moroccan 90% of the words they say is a French they don't speak Arabic if a Moroccan speak to me in his more in his language I will like I will I will understand maybe two words and 90 words is going to be out of uh, understanding so anyway our love to those who die today and they are resurrected in the same day with the Lord and you see it might be a sad news like I received a message it says bombs all over the churches in Sri Lanka and I said to myself, I was in the bed still. I mean, what the news? What is a mor what a morning? But in the same, I said to myself, I mean, are we going to be better than Christ Himself? Christ Himself was a crucified. So, my friend, it's an honor. You see, some disciples of Christ, when they were crucified. They said to them, don't crucify us the same as a Christ, crucify us upside down. We don't deserve to be the same as a Christ. So we are powerful because we are peaceful. Otherwise, killing is so easy. I mean, killing people is so easy. And especially if you are a coward who attack a bunch of people women and children in a in a in a building doesn't matter what it is it is a mosque it's a church it is a synagogue it is whatever it is killing is so easy but so easy for those cowards not for us for us killing a human being is not easy at all not because we cannot do it but because it's evil being evil is so easy being good is so hard so my friend today is a glorious day and I say to you in Arabic again El Masih Qam Haqqan Qam actually I did not sing for long. 
Should I sing it for you? El Messiah Qam Min Baini Al Amwat Wa Wati Al Maut Bil Maut Wa Wahab Al Haya Lil Zina Fil Hubu Al Messiah Qam Min Baini Al Amwat Wa Wahab I mean, I don't know really how to express that I am a person who believe that we celebrate the Easter day every day. It's not in a day. That day will never be repeated. But we can repeat that day by us, for we are going to be resurrected. So my friend, be happy. He is risen. And he is our Lord. I apologize my voice is not good today <clears throat> uh, not because of camera urine but too much talking yeah actually you know I believe actually that date the perfect date for uh, for the Easter is the Orthodox date and I have a reasons for that uh, you see, the, the Western calendar is different from the Eastern calendar. So, let us see. Maybe I can find you some videos. The reason made me believe that the Eastern cal calendar is better because every year, since 2,000 years ago, light come from the empty tomb of Christ. I don't know how many of you watch those videos. And, you know, the Muslims, they did their part during their occupation to Jerusalem. They closed this church and they, they start saying to the Muslims, this is, this is a lie, this is not true. There is no light. And they could not stop it. Every, every year, in the day of resurrection, a light come from the empty tomb of Christ. And people light their candles. And they come from around the earth. And if you don't believe me, you can go yourself to Jerusalem. It's going to be in a week from now. And you can witness with your own eyes for an amazing miracle which happened every year for the last 2,000 years. I wonder what comes from the grief of Muhammad. Who else from his empty tomb there is a light to come every year? There is a Muslim, he made a, a comment. I will try to find it for you. And he said, actually, let me, let me get the comment about what he said so we can put it in the screen. Me. <clears throat> let us see he said what it's mean I, I'm just trying to quote as he uh, uh, word by word but I can give you the meaning so he said okay well look like uh, Satan imagine Satan he was must be very happy uh, for Jesus uh, he died and he was making fun of us supposedly because we believe that Jesus died and here you notice how we are really uh, victorious by Christ and I will show you why from the comment of the Muslim let me get it so we can read together uh, I'm searching the comment um 
I hope he did not delete it because for some reason hmm I'm sure the comment is there. Let us see. Try something else. Mm. All right. Well, it was a day ago, so it uh, looked like too many comments to, to search. Uh, but anyway, he's saying he what, what he meant to say, that because you believe that Jesus died, well, obviously, Satan was victorious then. But look at the funny uh, comment. If you Muslims agree that the death of Jesus will make Satan happy, and that means Satan have victory. So are you saying Satan have victory when your prophet killed by poison and he die? And this is why always I say, when you answer a Muslim, use their logic. To expose the stupidity if Satan here we go I found it actually I found it oops Jesus died guess uh, he's I think what guest who most he's saying I think you want to say I guess guess who is most happy the happy with that news Satan and Lucifer because Jesus is the truth Jesus died and the truth died. <laughs> a Muslim comment. Here you notice how this is, is, is stupid. Because you Muslims, you Muslims yourself, claim that Jesus never died. So if Jesus, he is the truth, and he is, if he died, the truth died, well, that means Jesus in Islam is God, for he did not die. If your logic is because Jesus died, then the truth died. Well, in your religion, your cult, Jesus did not die, so the truth never died. So he must accept him now to be the truth, and he is your God. Always use the Abdul logic because they are infected. We continue. Mr. Christian Prince. I think better you bring many Christians before converting Muslims to Christianity because today millions of Christians become atheists and in Iceland they cannot believe what Iceland what they cannot believe in Jesus anymore in England more than 70% Christians never attend in churches service every Sunday and hundreds of churches close ha 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 well, hold on the fact this is all is a lie I was in London and I attended a huge crowd of the churches praying to the Lord. Just a week ago, we have a church is burned in, in France. And donations come like rain from Christians. And tens of thousands, they gather in the street to pray because of that incident. And not only that. Al Jazeera, which is your Islamic TV, said 16,000 Muslims leave in Islam a day. When a Muslim says 16,000 leave in Islam a day convert into Christianity, that means the number is a lot bigger. If your Muslim TV station saying 16,000 Muslims leave in Islam a day, 6 million a year, why Muslim want to say such a thing? Fabricating, lying, maybe. They lie always so when you are talking about Christianity is dying so why you are forbidding the Bible and why you are attacking churches if Christianity is dead why if somebody want to believe in Christianity you kill him if Christianity is dying anyway why in Saudi Arabia if somebody have a paper of the Bible he will be arrested and he will be executed most likely what are you afraid of from Christianity is dying the fact it is you who have a dead religion 
the first day Muhammad he died the Muslims they went apostate and me myself I witnessed to tons of people every month leaving Islam and there's many videos of me speaking to people live and they are leaving Islam and accepting Christ live on air in my program and most of people who leave Islam actually speak to me they don't want to be known in public they don't even want to speak so I speak to them in, in private and this is not a secret maybe one out of a hundred who leave Islam speaking to me is the one who will go and say okay I'm gonna leave Islam life in public and I will say that because the majority they fear death of this filthy cult but here notice with me when the Muslims he said that this is a happy news if you believe that Jesus died this is a happy news for Satan well that can be a happy news for Satan if Satan was able to celebrate the death of Jesus as you do because Jesus is alive and Christians don't believe that Jesus is dead you see when a person he try to be silly he can be silly even a human being when he die he have a spirit and when we say Christ is risen we are talking about what the resurrection what resurrection mean resurrection is re re reunite the body with the spirit I apologize for the mic the body with the spirit so the flesh of Christ die but our Lord the Messiah is always alive this is why it's called resurrection they don't even understand language they don't even understand uh, even their religion by the way even Muslims they believe in what Muhammad said and what Muhammad said that he is in a grave but yet he is alive and Muhammad because he is obsessed with himself he think he is God look what he said to the Abdul Muhammad he said to the Muslims and by the way this is false translation they said invoke many blessing on me it doesn't say blessing it says Salat invoke many blessing on me this is a false translation invoke your prayer on me for your prayer will be placed in front of me the Muslim they said to him but you will be dead and your body will be consumed so how how you will how you how how our prayer will be played uh, in a, uh, will be placed like a place in the front of you he said we people or the, the prophets we the prophets Allah has forbid the earth from consuming our body but here you notice Muhammad is saying that your prayer will be submitted to him now you answer me and you tell me how you Muslims claim that Muhammad is a man and he is just a prophet yet he claimed that your prayer will not go to Allah will go to him and yet he is dead he is a living dead is that a zombie a comment made by a Muslim his name is uh, what does Salat mean you devil worshiper I don't know this is a Muslim talking all right let's see Allah has sent Salat, grace, honors, blessing, and mercy on the Prophet Muhammad. Notice here when the Muslims try to fabricate a lie about what the Quran is saying, look how many words they put between the bracket. Allah plays his Salat between two bracket, grace, grace, or graces, honor, and blessing and mercy. Okay, hold on. If Allah gave Muhammad blessing and honor and mercy already why the angels need to give a blessing and mercy and honor already and why the Muslims need to do that already you are blessed do you see how they expose their lies just to make it simple for you if I am blessed by God the blessing come only from God not from the human not from the angels 
you see if I say to you bless you I am NOT the one is a blessing you I am just making a short sentence which is may God bless you so if Allah blessed him already who need the angels to bless him and why he's asking the Muslims to ask if this is a blessing why he's asking the Muslims to bless him he's blessed already <laughs> you know what I mean this is a very stupid naive statement from Muhammad Muhammad he is obsessed with himself he think he is God in earth and he want to tell everybody that all of you you have one duty in this life to pray on me Allah he pray on me the angels pray on me and you pray on me for your prayer will be placed in the front of me and now every Muslim is worried oh, oh Muhammad he will say well, why where is your prayer on me hmm? and why you want to pray to Muhammad I thought he is a prophet already is he are you saying to me he is not saved and if you ask Allah for more blessing what does that mean is going to increase the credit for him the Muslim translation of Muhammad God praying on him is very funny and very naive And here you notice a mistake in this verse. It says that Allah and His angels shower, shower a blessing on the Prophet. So you know, you, you know, like I, I like to to make a drawing always to explain for those who maybe have a difficulty to understand. So let us assume the following: we have Allah, we have Muhammad. Let us do this. All right. We have a circle. And in this circle, we have a guy, his name is Muhammad, and he is standing in the middle. And then we have Allah is showering Muhammad with a prayer. And then we have the angels. The angels all over. And then we have all the Muslims in the world. And all of them, they are throwing their blessing arrows, as Muslims they claim. It's a blessing, it's not a prayer. Mm -hmm. Okay. You see, the second they say that Allah is, uh, the, uh, the Quran saying, Oh, you Muslims, ask for a blessing. Ask for a blessing. Is it? This is a prayer? So the Muslims he pray to Allah to send his blessing on Muhammad according to Muslims not according to me this is Salat to pray on him but we will go with this uh, 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 stupid uh, claim so human sending prayer to Muhammad Allah sending a prayer to Muhammad let us make Allah prayer in different color we will make it in yellow because Allah like yellowish that's why Hezbollah they choose the, the color yellow angels they do the same as Allah they are they are because the verse saying Allah and the angels they are praying on Muhammad and that mean angels and Allah they are equal you see angels and Allah they are praying on Muhammad and all who you believe pray on him too so now we have angels we have a human everybody in this universe focusing in one man Muhammad is the center of the universe this is the whole point of this is stupid verse everybody God angels human even animals they are praising the praised one Muhammad that's why his name is the praised one the name of Muhammad alone is enough to prove to us that he is the devil because he claim a name of God if Muhammad mean the praised one, so who is the who is the one uh, who is the praised to? 
Is it the name of your prophet is Muhammad, which means the praised one? And this is exactly what's happening in this verse. Allah, the angels, and the believers praising one man. Any Muslim he dare to say I'm lying? Any Muslim he dare to say that's false? The praised one, even his name is the praised one. What does that mean? It's mean this guy he claimed to be God. His name is is an antichrist name. His name is anti God name. His name is anti Tawheed. The Muslim they say we believe in Tawheed. How you believe in Tawheed and you believe in a guy his name the praised one. Do we have any Muslim want to say something? Any Muhammadan? So when a Muslim, he tried to deny the crucifixion of Jesus, the question is, where do you get this from? Actually, the Quran proved that we are telling the truth. Do you know that about the crucifixion of Jesus? Do you like me to show you the reference, Muslims? Let us go to the Quran. If we go in the yellow pages of Muhammad, we will find the following verse. Chapter 4, verse 157. And I want the Christians to focus with me, please. To show you how we can get Muhammad and his yellow pages book busted. And by the way, if you don't like this translation, we can change it for you. Who is a Muslim when I tell us what translation you like? And I will accept any translation you choose for us. Any Muhammadan, he have a favorite translation? Because all of them, they are liars anyway. Anyone? Who is a Muhammadan when I choose for us a translation he like? You see, I'm giving you opportunity, so you will not say to me, I'm choosing my own uh, all of them, they are garbage for me, by the way. Hmm? Any translation you favor, Abdul? You see how nice we are? We are asking them, what do you, how you, how you want me to beat you? To beat you from which book? Which translation do you want me to use it to beat you? It's just a huge one. I mean, come on, Abdul. I know you are there. Okay, you don't want to choose what I can do. Okay, this is Yusuf Ali. This is what? Yusuf Ali. That they said in boast between two bracket, we killed the Christ Jesus. And by the way, the Muslims they come to you sometime and they say to you, Oh, do you know that in the cross there was two guys, their name is Jesus, brother? So what Jesus is a crucified brother? And they say to you, Oh, no, no, no. The one who was released is the one who is not Christ. It is the false Jesus, is the one who his name is Jesus. But look, their Quran beat them, and this is how you can refute them and shut them up about that verse. If the Muslim come to you and says to you, there was two person and their, their name is Jesus in the cross, and they obviously release not they release, they release the real Christ and they let the other one go. Look what the Quran says. The Jews they said, We killed Christ Jesus. Did it? The Quran did not say we killed the Jews, said we killed Jesus. The Quran says we killed the Christ Jesus. Do you see it? And that will get them busted. Even their book is getting them busted. They try to lie. They say, oh, oh no, no, no. There's two, two Jesus in the cross. So are you saying to me that your prophet is a liar? Because the Jews did not release Christ. They released the other guy who his name is Jesus, as you claim. Not Christ. And the Quran confirmed that. Unless you are saying to me that your God Allah is a liar and that is very possible. So they said, who? The Jews. We killed the Christ Jesus. Not only they say we killed the Christ Jesus, they confirm that he is the son of Mary. Do you see it, guys? 
Do you see how we get them busted? Now, did you learn if a Muslim he come to you with that argument how you can get him busted? If he said to you there was two Jesus in the cross, then you say to him that's me in the Quran did lie. Because you are saying the Jews they release Christ and they kill the guy who his name is Jesus. Not Jesus Christ is the one who crucified, right? But this is not what the Quran is saying. The Quran is saying that the Jews they killed, they claim that they killed Jesus, the Christ, the son of Mary. Same time, look what the Quran says. And not only the son of Mary, the messenger of Allah. So he is a messenger. <laughs> he is the son of Mary. And he is a Christ, and yet you will get a dummy Abdul saying to you, Brother, there was two Jesus in the cross. Which one they released, brother? Now we continue. Then look what Allah said to the Jews. He said, But they killed him not, nor crucified him, but it but so it was made to appear to them. And here is Muhammad is making poo poo because by saying that statement, Muhammad he just claimed that Allah he made us see someone look like Jesus, and he is as Jesus. He have the face of Jesus, the voice of Jesus, the name of Jesus in the cross. Well, if this is what happened, that's mean we are telling the truth. Do you understand guys what I'm saying? If Allah made Jesus appear in the cross, but Jesus was not in the cross, that's mean we saw Jesus. That's mean we are saying the truth. And that's mean Allah is a liar. Let us think about it this way. We have a powerful demon. His name is Allah. He's a very powerful. And he can make you see someone being killed. But in reality, he was not. Okay. And now I am a human who is limited in ability. I saw someone, he speak as Jesus, he look as Jesus, and he have the face, the hair, the, the eyes, and the voice of Jesus. And even his mother, she did not notice that this is not Jesus. We are going to blame who? For some reason, my microphone making noise, I apologize. We are going to blame who? We are going to blame Allah because Allah the devil is the one here claiming that I made you see him being crucified and I am going to punish you for believing in my lie. Do you understand guys? Do you understand the logic, the stupid logic? So Allah, he made Jesus appear in the cross. He made someone look like Jesus. He cloned, this is what the Muslim believe. He cloned someone look like Jesus. Exactly. I mean, who can who can do clone better than Allah? <laughs> the counterfeit. The God of Islam is the first counterfeit God. And yes, he is a deceiver. So Allah, he deceived us. He make a counterfeit Jesus. He made a clone Jesus. He put him in the cross. But this is not Jesus. This was a fake Jesus from the fake Allah, from the lies of Allah. And now Allah is asking us, why you believe in my lies? So Allah, he made us believe in his lie. And he is upset because we believe in his lie. I don't know why the is is the microphone doing bad noise too still. It's fixed when I hit it. I don't know. I think my mic is Arabian, like violence. You hit it, the noise goes. Uh, maybe I need to buy a new one. So look at this. The stupidity of this cult is beyond imagination. Now here, here this verse proving to us that the Bible is a true word of God. Anyone know how? Who want to help me? How this verse confirm that the Bible is saying the truth?
Anyone? How does verse confirm that the Bible is saying the truth? Who want to help me? This verse alone destroyed Muhammad and his God. You see, there's many mistakes here. But the one I want to focus in for now, as long the Quran witness that Allah, he made them see Jesus crucified, that's mean, this is what they saw. And the truthful is the one who say what he saw. Is that correct? The truthful is not the one who says something he did not see. The truthful, the true witness is the one he say what he saw. So those who saw Christ were crucified and they wrote in the Bible, Christ was crucified, they are telling what they saw, which means they are being truthful. And the Quran is the book of lies. So this verse is not really against Christianity as much it's against Muhammad because Muhammad is being a fool. He's just proved to us that Islam is a stupid cult. And look here how many mistakes. The Jews, they said we killed the Christ. The Jews are still waiting for Christ, you idiot. <laughs> the Jews, they said we killed the Christ. Have you ever heard of a stupid statement like this before? The Jews, they said we killed the Christ. So they are waiting for who now? Dummy. Too much camera urine. So from the first word to the last word is nothing but rubbish. And look at this. Allah supposedly now is being wise, he said. And those who differ therein are full of doubts. No, we are not. You idiot, you it's you who is full of doubts <laughs> with no certain knowledge. Oh, you are the one who have a certain knowledge. What is a certain knowledge? I cloned him for you, but only conjectures to follow, for they are surely they killed him not. Okay, they showed me. You see, the Muslims they say to you, How you can believe in a Bible written 60 years after Jesus? Muhammad, he never witnessed Jesus. He never saw Jesus. He never spoke to Jesus. He never understand the language of Jesus. And yet he never been in the land where Jesus came. And yet he can witness to Jesus that he was not crucified 600 years after. Have you ever heard of a madness and stupidity like this before? 600 years after, a man, he come from the middle of nowhere. And the Muslim, they say he is illiterate, which means he do not know how to write, how to read. And he said to us, but the sister, the Christian, they think that this was crucified. And the fact he wasn't crucified because Allah, he cloned him. And here we see the influence of a Christian cult. But the Christian cult did not say Jesus wasn't crucified. That Christian cult said that there is no way Jesus the true son of God is a crucified for sure the father he placed someone have his flesh in the cross Muhammad he adopted that idea so in fact here Muhammad is not denying really Christianity as much he is accepting a Christian cult but because those Christian cult they believe in Jesus he's God they did not say he's not God but because he's God, therefore, then they said, okay, well, there is no way the father will let the son be in, in the cross. It was an assumption from them. So the fact it is, it is the false Christians who come with this assumption. And Muhammad, in the beginning of his life, he was a false Christian. He's like Jehovah's Witnesses. A bunch of people confuse who is Jesus. Sometime he is Angel Michael. Sometime he is, you know, God. Sometime they, he, there is many gods, the Jehovah's Witnesses, they believe.
No, Muhammad do not know the Bible. You see, even the word in the Quran for the Christian. Anyone knows what the word in the, for Christian in the Quran? The Quran never called, never mentioned Christians in the Quran. The Quran never, never mentioned the Christians. The Quran speak about group of people are called Nasara. Nasara, the Nazarene. The word Nasara, according to Arabic, supposedly according to Muslims, it is the helper of Christ. But the fact it is a name of a Christian cult who they've been called by the Christians Nasara. Why they are called Nasara? Because the Christian called them Nasara for they are poor in the understanding. Nasara is it's a word mean poor, the poor. So they are the poor. And those poor, poor in what? Not poor in money. They are poor in the understanding of the Bible. So the Christians, they isolated them and they rejected them and they called them Nasara. Muhammad, because he never witnessed to real Christians, because he is limited in stupidity and his knowledge, he thought that those are those are the Christians, those are the Nasara, those are the Christians. So he called anyone who is believing in Jesus as Nasara. So the word Nasara is not what the Muslim they claim. It's mean the helpers. It is a word mean the poor, the poor in the understanding of the gospel of Christ. And Muhammad is one of the poor understanding of anything about Christ to the point he don't know even what the Trinity is. Muhammad in the Quran, he come with a new Trinity and with the real Trinity, we cannot find in the Quran. The Trinity in the Quran that the, the Nasara they believe in a guy, his name is Isa, his mother is Mary, and his father is Allah, and they are a family. That this is not Christianity, and this is not the Trinity. Not a single verse in the Quran telling us that the Holy Spirit is the Trinity or part of the Trinity. There's no verse in the Quran. It says that God, the Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Spirit, and this is rejected by us. There's no way. It says clearly that the Christians, which is called Nasara, which is the Christian cult, Muhammad saying that the Nasara think that the Messiah is the son of Allah. And Allah said to him, did you say to your people to worship me and my mother? Do we have any Muslim in the chat would like to call me? I can open pal talk for you. Any Muslim he claim knowledge, not just a, not just an idiot in the from the village. Do we have anyone? Who is Abdul? He claim knowledge. He would like to call me. If you go in the Middle East, by the way, you will not find any Christian except to be called Nasara. We are Nasara. We are Christians. In Arabic, we call ourselves Masihi. Masihi. That's what is our name. We never, what is the word? Where is this word Nasara is coming from? You cannot find one Christian book saying that we are Nasara. This is how the word is written in Arabic. Masihi. From the word Messiah. The word Messiah is El Messiah. And here, by the way, I want to give your attention for something very important. You will not see a Muslim saying El Muhammad. There's two letters here in the beginning. Let me highlight. Two letters in the beginning is A L. What what AL mean? 
You remember before we said in Arabic al mean the the in Arabic the so al mean the okay so if you are speaking Arabic there's no one will say the name without saying al Messiah the Messiah do you know why anyone knows why for there's only one that's number one there's only one his name is al messiah no no other one no muslim will dare to call himself or his son al messiah if you do that he will be killed immediately by the muslims question why you call yourself muhammad you call your son muhammad you call yourself ahmad but nobody dare to call himself al messiah and here you notice we mentioned to you before that the word al in the beginning in the old aramaic and hebrew is equal to the word god so when we say al messiah we are saying god messiah the messiah the god we are not just quoting a name In the New Hebrew, the word A-L became ill. So we say Emmanuel, Israel. But in the Old Hebrew, it is Israel, Emmanuel, which is a word meaning God. The name of Al-Masih alone is like the shining sun in the darkness. There's only one Messiah and even the cult of the Muslims waiting for the Messiah to come and here we need to have some questions about that why not Muhammad to come back any Muslim can tell me why uh, we have a guy his name is Santos who uh, he's, he's making a joke maybe be careful guys with the, your jokes don't be don't be silly don't disturb my text my my program any Muslim can tell us why you Muslims are waiting for the Messiah to come but you are not waiting for Muhammad to come I apologize for those who they are asking questions I did not notice you but we'll try to go back and see okay we have uh sunny saying thank you for the hard work thank you i'm not doing any hard work you see this is not my hard work i wish i can do more and more uh but you know sometimes i feel that i need to give even people a break from me i wish i can do really more i used to, to go i used to go stay teaching for 13 14 hours you guys you have no idea <laughs> this is nothing to do with hard work at all but you know but you get older and things became harder sitting behind the, the table for many hours will make your your knee hurt and I'm a person when I sit to talk for some reason I don't relax I feel like I'm so excited you know the same when I go in a stage in a church I don't know how many time I spoke in a stage in a church but each time I go in the stage I feel so I mean I don't I, it's hard to explain to you because I feel how big the responsibility is to speak to a lot of people and a mistake a mistake you do can misguide somebody this is a big responsibility do we agree it's a big responsibility because there is many people who trust what you say and what if you say something wrong? A decent person, he will be worried about saying something wrong. Because, because of you, you might mislead somebody. And that is a big sin. 
how old are you? I'm not that old, but I am. I'm saying it's, I am not the same when I was like. Uh, I'm like now. My mom is 17. I'm right now. I am. I think I am a 21. My mom is 17. Have you ever heard of see somebody he's born after his father four years after his father died? That is Muhammad. Look like it happened to many people, not only him. Muhammad, he was born four years after his father's death. You solve the problem. So my mother is 17, I am a 21. I mean, why you Muslim, you will not believe me now. If your prophet, he was born four years after his father. Anyone knows why the Muslims, what, how many years the Muslims believe that the woman, she can be, uh, she can carry a baby for how long? Anyone know? I guess you are 45. Eh, 45 is a good number. Let us make an auction. <laughs> why you care about my age? Come on. Who care? You see, your age, your age. You know, when I was a child, we in the Middle East, children are not allowed to associate with adults. Like when we have visitors, it's not a respect, an act of respect to let children to sit between the adult. Children, they go play with the children in different room. So like you have visitors, their children, they go, and all the children, with the, the, the other family children, and they go there. I was most of the time invited by the people who they are coming to visit my family they say let this guy this kid come we'd like to hear what he uh what, you know and they talk to me so since i was really young i was mature and i explained to you why and that's why i say to you you have to learn and how you have to read i was spending a lot of time reading while children they were wasting their time doing stupid things me myself i walk for more than an hour just to go to the library and i read like you know as if i am hungry for food as you never believe so in a very early age i was not speaking as a kid i was speaking as a very mature person so age is not your maturity age is you being smarter and how much knowledge you have There's many people, they are in their 60, and yet they are naive, and they are not even in the age of a teenage. So, it's not your age make you, let us say, aged. It's your knowledge. You can be 60, but yet you are 25. And I'm not talking about health, I'm talking about knowledge and wisdom. Anyway, <clears throat> and I believe maybe the Lord who was preparing me for one day to do something. And he made me like to study and read. Uh, but the important is, if we learn, we have to learn and we you know we have, there are some people they learn and they keep their knowledge for themselves. You, if you are a person, especially if you are a Christian, you should share your knowledge in the best way you know, in the best honest way you know, and not to keep it yourself. Now, we go back to our topic. So you notice here that the name Al-Messiah, the Messiah, is a very unique name, and no one else has it. And I want to ask the Muslim the question, why his name is the Messiah? Any Muslim can tell us why his name is the Messiah? Anyone? Why this name is given to him? Who gave him this name? And just to show you how shallow Islam is, guess what the Muslim they say about the Messiah? Anyone knows what the Messiah is for the Muslims? There's a thousands and thousands of interpretation of Islam made by Muslims. Not a single Muslim knows what the word Messiah mean. Hmm? 
not a single Muslim knows what the word Messiah mean to the point one of the interpretation they said the Messiah was called the Messiah because he have a flat feet can you believe it the Messiah was called the Messiah because he have a flat feet Who can more stupid than the cult of Islam? Allah called him the Messiah because he had flat feet. But they don't they have no idea what this word means. It's not it's not an Arabic. Muhammad did not tell them. And the Muslims now is guessing. Okay, his name is the Messiah. What the Messiah mean? Okay, what Mary mean? Muslim, what Mary mean? Mary, the mother of Jesus. What does that mean? They don't know. What Allah mean? They do not know. What Isa mean? They do not know. What Ishmael mean? They don't know. Musas, they don't know. Abraham, they don't know. What Jibreel mean? They don't know. In the cult of Islam, nobody knows what they are talking about. My friend, there is no need to send me a picture. I don't accept pictures anyway. I don't accept files. No, don't know. If you go in the Quran, just to give you an example, and we mentioned that before, if we go in the Quran, we search for the word Israel. Israel, right? Okay. You ask the Muslim, who is Israel? Who is a Muslim in the text when I tell us who is Israel? The Quran have the word Israel mentioned all over. Okay. Oh, children of Israel, shouldn't you tell us first who is Israel? Who is Israel? Who is the Muslim hero when I tell me who is Israel? Huh? You are talking about Islam even in my holiday because the Muslim today, the Muslim, the peaceful Muslims in Sri Lanka, they did uh, uh, say Happy Easter for us. So as long you know it's my holiday, can you tell me why Allah is happy for slaughtering more than 300 Christians in Sri Lanka? Abdul is complaining. Why in my holiday? I am talking about Islam. I'm not talking about Islam. I'm talking about Christianity. Don't you see? You Muslims, you have no religion. You are copying us, trying to build a religion at, out of us. What do you have to do with Israel? Nothing. You hate Israel. You want to kill Israel. They want to destroy Israel. But you. So why are your Quran is speaking about Israel? Why are your Quran is speaking about the Messiah? You don't believe in the Messiah. Why you have Mary in your book? Because you want to use the good names for the filthy Muhammad. Now here we ask the Abdul again. Who is Israel? Not a single Muslim can tell you who is Israel. The only way to know who is Israel, they have to go to the Bible to show you who is Israel. Then how this is, can be the book of God? How a book of God don't tell us he's talking about what? Imagine we have a holy book and suddenly it says Trump, all oh, children of Trump. Shouldn't you tell us first who is Trump? Suddenly, suddenly, oh, children of Trump. Okay, nice to meet you, Trump. Who is Trump? Brother, Zachary Naik, who is uh, Trump? Brother Fitter, did the person in the name of the Christian print? And he's asking who the Israel. Israel is very well known person. And actually, this is why they call him, they call his children the children of Israel. Uh, brother, but who is Israel? Are you stupid or what? I'm telling you, his name is Israel. Why you want to explain to you? Uh, but yeah, but Israel, who is he? Is, who is he? Like, uh, he is the son of who? Where, where he live? What language he speak? Where he's coming from? Brother, sister, don't take him to Christian prince. If he asks you who is Israel, say to him, he's an Israeli. Uh, he's, Israel is an Israeli? Uh, we know... Uh, Zakir, please, brother, brother, who is who is Israel? Can you tell us, please, who is Israel? This, I told you, I think you are stupid, and I think I need to send you to Baghdad. 
if the Quran saying to you the children of Israel, obviously the children they are the children of Israel. It's very clear. What is it clear about it? It says the children of Israel. Who is Israel? Why you are so stupid? I just told you, he is the father of the children of Israel. He is the father of the children of Israel. And now we know him supposedly. Who is a Muslim? I tell us who is Israel. Any Muslim? Any Mohammedan? This is the most stupid cult ever. It's a thief. It's a theft. You know, when somebody copy paste, he take from some some other book and he put names. He take, he stole the names, but they didn't know the name. Who is this? Imagine you, somebody is making a, a, a story, a novel, like what they call it, novel. What do you call it? Like a, a story about a bunch of people, and suddenly he inserted a name there, and this name is very important. But he don't tell you who's this guy. From the middle of nowhere, oh, children of Israel. Who is Israel? We don't know. The only way to know is to go to the Bible. For the Bible is the book of God, and this is the yellow pages of Muhammad. You know, on yellow pages, they don't give you the history of the person, they give you his number. Is that correct? This is a yellow pages. That's why I call the Quran yellow pages. Yellow pages is a headline. They don't tell you who is the person. They, they mention only the name of the person. Is that true? You open the yellow pages, you find, okay, James Walker. Okay, but who is James Walker? Nobody knows. Uh, his phone number is etc. In the Quran, there's no phone number. There's no date. There's no address. There's no location. There's only John Walker. Who is John Walker? Nobody knows. Which means even as a yellow pages, the Quran fail. The yellow pages, at least it's organized by letters in a good way. It's easy to find things. If I ask the Muslim, which verse, which chapter in the Quran is speaking about the creation of the earth and the heaven? It's all over. Nowhere you can find, like, you know, you go in the Bible, you'll find the book of Genesis. In the book of Genesis, is speaking about, this. It, it, the name of the book is clear. In the Quran, okay, where we can find how Allah created the earth, and it's all over. It's like, it's like you know, somebody, I'm just trying to be polite. I don't want to use the word diarrhea. Did I say diarrhea? It's like somebody have a diarrhea, but he is doing it in the front of a fan. And the fan is so strong. And then the diarrhea is all over. Where is the book? You don't have a book. You don't have a book. And not only that, which make it more funny, the Quran call us only Christians and Jews, people of the book. Never call the Muslims people of the book. Do you know why? Because they have yellow pages. People of the book. Who are they? The Christians. The Jews. You Muslims don't have a book. Even your Quran witness for that. And here, by the way, Saying the word, people of the book proving to us that the author of the Quran is certified stupid. Anyone knows why? Look, all those verses speaking about people of the book. Anyone knows why? How you call them people of the book if you don't accept what they believe in? Imagine, guys, 
I have a guy, he is Jehovah's Witnesses, and I say to him, Oh, people of the book. I mean, this is stupid. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? Can we call a Jehovah's Witnesses a person who believe in Jehovah's Witnesses cult? Can we say to him, You are a people of the book? We cannot. Why we cannot? Who want to help me? Why we cannot call Jehovah's Witnesses people of the book? Because they don't have a book, they have a false translation for the book. They, they are not people of the book. People of the book is the one who preserved the book. This is what people this is what the word means. The second you say to me, the people of the book, it means we are the one who preserve and we are following the true book. So, how you stupid religion says that we don't believe in the true religion, and yet you call us the people of the book. People of the scriptures. How you Muslim you say that we corrupted the scriptures yet you call us people of the scriptures? I mean how stupid that is To make it simple for the naive one For the naive the smart I'm sure they understand me already People who have the true book, what we shall call them? Let us make an example here and we say, okay. We will replace the word people of the book with healthy people. Healthy. Oops. I want to show you an article actually. Oh no. If we go and see what the word healthy people mean, it means somebody is healthy, isn't it? I mean, nobody wanna call you healthy if you are sick. I mean, that's stupid. So healthy people, why they are called healthy people? Because simply they are healthy. So if you call a Christian, healthy people and according to you they are sick don't you think you are being stupid here if you Muslims you call the Christians kuffar infidels lost misguided and then you call them the healthy people Can you come with something more stupid than this? So we are sick. Yet you call us in the book healthy people. We have a Muslim here, Asif Khan, saying, "Just let me let me show you his uh, his comment." Okay, Asif is upset, and we have to make Asif uh, uh, happy. Uh, what's wrong, Asif? Asif said, just like CP knows right from wrong. Asif, do you know right from wrong? Let me tell you about right and wrong. In Islam, it is right to have sex with a child and you call her a wife. In Islam, it's wrong to marry a widow, but it's right to marry a child. In Islam, it is right to beat a woman. It's not right to say to a man, you cannot beat a woman. In Islam, it's right to attack a church and to take the Christians and the women of the Christians as slaves. In Islam, a Muslim woman, she have to give herself to the Prophet if he like her ass. In Islam, it is not wrong to teach hate. It's not wrong to say the Jews should be killed. It's not wrong, according to Islam, to be a racist. To say a black dog is the devil. It's not wrong in Islam to say angels are only white and the devil is black. 
is not wrong in Islam to say we should hate all those who they are not Muslims including the Hindus the Buddhists the Christians you name it so you are telling me and you are coming to me to say to me just like CP knows right from wrong but yet he continue to let his mouth unchecked was your prophet his mouth checked when he said the one who is proud about his family tell him to go and bite the penis of your father Huh? You are the one is talking about abusing women and men. Is it your prophet who split a woman two pieces when she was alive just because she made a poetry against him and she is over 80 years old? I mean, look how they try to fool you with the foolish statement. Is it your prophet? He says the one who is proud about his family. Tell him to go and suck the clitoris of his mother. And yet you claim that you know right from wrong. Suck the clitoris if, you, if your mother. Bite the penis of your father. Is that a word of a prophet of God? And yet you are asking me to check my mouth. Are you there, Asif? Asif, what about you be brave and you give me a call in Pal Talk? Guys, do you think this Asif Khan, he have the, I don't want to say he have the balls because all the balls is given to Muhammad. He got a dish of shish kebab, he ate it, he got the power of 40 men. So Asif, do you, did you eat some of the shish kebab of the Prophet? So maybe you have the, 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 the balls to call me live? And I will make you read your Prophet saying, the one who is proud about his inheritance, go and tell him to bite the penis of his father. And I want you to tell me why your prophet did not clean his mouth. And what kind of a prophet he says such a thing? Look, Asif is playing dead now. He is not responding. He got his diarrhea. In the best scenario, he will say, I have to go because it got my period. Are you there, Asif? What happened? You thought I did not see your text and now you are dead? Hmm? And let me show you how the Muslim, they fabricate the translation about the Prophet saying, go and bite the penis of your father. Guys, read with me this translation and laugh. A man, he was proud about his father in the time of Jahiliya. Time of Jahiliya, which means time before Islam, and they called him the time of ignorance. The fact, it's you who live in ignorance today. The Prophet said, the Prophet said, and look at the funny, stupid translation, which is trying to deceive you. What the Prophet said? He said, if someone consoles people in the way people of a uh, council each in the day of jahiliya which, which means before islam bite him then bite him what a liar where it says then bite him your prophet saying to people bite each other look how funny the translation the prophet said if somebody is proud about his old days go bite him <laughs> <laughs> This is a hadith from your prophet? You're a prophet saying, bite him? Hey, Asif, are you there? Asif? The prophet said, if somebody is a proud, we should bite him. We should bite him. We are follower of Allah being ordered. To bite him, to bite him, <laughs> bite him. I mean, how in the world, you Muslims, you come with such a stupid translation? Are you there, Asif? Your prophet is teaching you, you peaceful Muslims, to bite somebody because he is practicing what they used to practice before Islam. He's proud about in his in heritage. Bite him. 
the fact it doesn't say bite him it says tell him bite the penis of your father this has nothing to do with bite him but because they are ashamed of what it says in Arabic they try they didn't know what to say here in English so they said bite him Asif I want you to be honest with me when the last time you bite you did bite an infidel brother Asif did you practice this hadith brother brother did you bite anybody brother Asif brother so which one as if you accept my translation or the Muslim translation if you accept the Muslim translation it says your prophet he says bite him as if I am proud about my inheritance are you going to bite me brother hello hello Asif will bite you. Asif will bite you. Asif will eat you alive as the Prophet ordered him. Hmm. Prophet is ordering you, Muslim, to bite someone, to bite people. Uh, Asif now is in a vacation. He is looking for his teeth. The fact this this hadith saying that the one who is proud about his inheritance telling him to go and bite the penis of his father. What bite him? Man ta'azza bi'azai jahiliya fa'a'idduhu wa la takannu. And the Muslims, in order to cover the shame and the stupidity of their prophet, they said, Oh, he says the prophet, he says who do this, bite him, then bite him. Hey, Asif, brother, today we are going to do bite him attack. Brother, do you like to join us, brother? There's a guy, he is proud about himself, Asif, and we as a believer, brother, we have to obey the order of the prophet, we have to bite him. Brother Asif, don't forget the brother to brush your teeth, brother, and sharp them, brother. What is that? I mean, if Muhammad was speaking to a bunch of uh, German shepherd, I will say, okay, it makes sense. But Muhammad was not speaking to German shepherd. What do you mean, bite him? And the funny, the Muslim is asking you to check his mouth. What about your God? He check his mouth. Who promised us women who have a beautiful vagina? Brother? Have you ever heard of a guy describe for us how the penis will be? Look at this. I swear by Allah brothers and sisters I swear by Allah I swear by Allah that your penis in the heaven I swear by Allah I swear by Allah will never go flat I swear by Allah I swear by Allah I mean that's a good news I mean here we go this must be a prophet of God how Muhammad he knew this if Muhammad is not a prophet of God how he knew the conditions of a penis after a thousand of years from now. This is an amazing prophecy. The only one who knows what will happen to our penises is Muhammad. Nobody knows. Not even Christian brands. ZB. And not only that. Look, the good news, Allah will open import company and he will import for us from women from hell. Did you ask yourself why those women are from hell? Anyone knows why they are from hell? Why, why, why it says here, women from hell. Those are women. Allah will import from hell. Why? 
Anyone knows? That makes sense. Prostitutes are very expert. I mean, why Allah want to import for you a decent woman to do not even know how to put a makeup? Bring you someone, she is, you know, she have a law, she have many certification of porn, a porn star. She knew all the tricks. So look how he described them. People from hell whom they will have desirable front brother. Okay, brother, it says here desirable front. What is in the front brother? Okay, brother, sister. The person didn't ask a question with it related with him. Anything. It said desirable front. A brother, if you see a car, what is the best plate of the car? It's the front brother. And the woman, the bit of her beauty is in the front. What is in the front? They have two nipples, and they have two breasts, and they have, uh, you know, brother. Yeah, there. Yeah, the, go down. No, no, not. This is very low. No, no, the, the upper. Yeah, in the middle, in the middle. So, brother, the prophet, he described for us the women that will come from hell, brother, they are very beautiful, and they have the terrible front. I know, sure, this is very logical. None of us he like to have somebody look like that Karnaik. Desirable front? What, what does that mean exactly? Hello? And this is why they commit suicide today in those churches because they want to get those women with desirable front. This is the evil satanic teaching. People getting killed every day because of this stupid promises, satanic, demonic promises. Sadness around the earth happening every day because of this filthy man teaching his followers that if you kill in the name of Allah for my sake, I will give you this. And you can, you know, ask yourself, any, it doesn't matter who you are. You are a Muslim, you are a Hindu, you are a Buddha. What kind of a man who claimed to be of God, he makes such a promise? And by the way, they will say to you, this hadith is weak. But even weak hadith is accepted. And it's not weak. Sunan Ibn Majah is a book of Sahih. The books of Sahih are six books. In the world today, anything the Muslim they see, it's very embarrassing. They say it's weak, which weak, which means, uh, I mean, daif, which means weak. Like it's, uh, but even weak is accepted. You can go right now and search in, in uh, YouTube, search for Sheikh Hamza. And he explained to you that he explained to the dummy Abdul that the word weak is a stupid to say. He said, even he says, weak hadith is a weak argument, which means you Muslims, when you say it's weak, you are being stupid because weak hadith is accepted. But anything they don't like, anything will make Muhammad look like a fool or perverted, they say it's weak. And I agree, Islam is weak. Allah is weak. He need mujahideen to fight for him. He cannot do it himself. Do we have any Muslim would like to give me a call in Pal Talk? So I open my Pal Talk. Yeah, we just did, Amr. We just did. This is this is how they justify their killing. Even the Quran, you see, I, I was watching the, the broadcast from Sri Lanka and YouTube from a TV, and the Muslim there they're saying Islam has nothing to do with this. Islam means peace, you're right. Absolutely. Look what Muhammad he said. And this is why there's no Christians, there's no Jews left in the Arabian Peninsula. Islam is very peace. The same as Erdogan. He just two weeks ago, he said he want to take our holy church, Hagia Sophia. Loud and clear, in the year 2019, a Muslim leader saying it clearly, not only I took Constantinia from you, even your holy church, I will take it. He is a terrorist like Muhammad. Who gave you the right to take it? Oh, because I have a sword. 
and because the Christians in the countries around they are coward they are not stopping me well I don't know who is going to let him take it then we will see Do we have any Abdul? But my friend, God is good. You see, my voice is tired because I was speaking to a Muslim family. I spoke to them yesterday. Uh, yesterday I have some work I did after I, I finished uh, my broadcast. I did some work uh, like uh, cutting trees and stuff uh, and then after that I I received a message from somebody he told me he have a Muslim family and they are watching my videos for a while but they want to talk to me uh, directly so this Christian brother he did really great job talking to them and he don't really have too much answers for them he was just giving them my videos like they ask a question about something he copied the video which is fit with the question and they sent it to them so yesterday i spoke to this family almost i don't know six or seven times which mean um we spoke and then i give them some verses to read etc to search and then you know i wait for them to respond to me and then we talk again and a glory to the lord the father the mother the children they announce themselves as christians from yesterday and I'm so happy for them I don't know if they are listening or not but the whole family and they have they have many kids he have nine children this man he have nine children so him and his family and for sure the children they're the very young ones uh, they will be taught by their parents but the parents accepted the Christ and they were crying like babies and I I, I have I have no words to say uh, so you know they try to stop Christianity but actually I believe that their action is making a lot of Muslims come to Christ as I showed you in, in, in the news the city of Kobani which was the center of Isis in the north of Syria today is coming to Christ as never before tons of Muslims specifically Kurdish Muslims they are converting to Christianity and now let me see show you the news and now the priest in the church there his name is Muhammad and Ahmad <laughs> you believe it this is where Isis they build their dreams to establish the caliphate state I don't want to play the video they might have copyright but you can search for the same video it's in front of you <clears throat> all those you see there none of them was born as a Christian and I mean born from a Christian family because at the end of the day we have to really be born again with the Christ not to be just born from a Christian mother or a Christian father so they are coming to Christ as never before so they think by doing violence they can stop Christianity but what happened is the opposite because those Muslims they saw the truth about Islam finally Isis was witnessing for the truth of Muhammad Isis are the true Islam not what they say hundreds of articles thousands of articles saying Isis is Islam it's a big fat lie all the Muslim they knew that the true Muslims is Isis guys a true Christian is someone who followed Jesus do we agree <clears throat> not someone he called himself Christian Prince ah, you can call yourself Christian Prince you can put a cross you can but you can be a drug dealer you can be a child molester you can even wear a uniform of a priest but you are a child molester like Muhammad and this is what the Lord said not everyone says to me Lord Lord will enter the kingdom of my father but the one who do his will so who is the one who is a real Christian the one who do his will the will of who the will of our God which mean his teaching 
so the one who follow the steps of the Messiah is a Christian the one who don't he is not same for Muhammad the one who follow the steps of Muhammad he is a Muslim the one who don't he is not so we can say the majority of Muslims today they are not Muslims they are Muslims by name the true Muslims is the one who follow the steps of Muhammad the same as we say the true Christians is the one who follow the steps of Jesus the steps of Muhammad says if you see a Christian or a Jew humiliate him kill him spit in his face Muhammad he said I've been victorious by terror that's Muhammad I've been commanded to kill all mankind except those who believe in me and my God that's Muhammad is that a fake Muslim is a Muhammad a fake Muslim Was Muhammad a bad Muslim when he said, I'm going to expel the Jews and the Christians from the Arabian Peninsula? All the Jews, all the Christians, why? All. Genocide. So when they say to you, terrorists have nothing to do with Islam, as if they are saying to you that Muhammad has nothing to do with Islam. Isn't it Muhammad who said, no sort of a rock? <clears throat> What not sort of a raw mean? I was victorious <clears throat> by terror to the point that my enemy they have fear from me from a distance of a month journey. Do you see how nice Muhammad is? Not only he is a terrorist, he is the kind of a terrorist he can scare the hell of you from a distance of a month. So why they say to us, ISIS are not. Islam are you saying to me that Muhammad is not Islam <clears throat> I apologize I'm losing my voice because I spoke too much yesterday as I told you <clears throat> somebody asking can you ex uh, can you explain abrogation uh, abrogation is a, is a is another proof that Muhammad is a false prophet and I will explain to you how and in a very easy way why somebody when abrogate Allah given to him by God after a few weeks or even sometime in the same day I will give you an example look at this chapter 8 verse number 65 chapter 8 verse number 66 85 sorry chapter 8 verse number 65 and 66 all right in those two verses Muhammad he abrogated Allah order in the same week in the same day proving to us that he is nothing but a scam read Allah supposedly is talking, not Muhammad. Remember, the Quran is Allah speaking. Muhammad is just a messenger. Let us change the translation because this guy translation is really giving me a headache. I don't even understand his English. Muhammad, God, saying to the believers, go and kill. Allah saying to Muhammad, Ya ayyuha nabi, harrid al mu'mina al qital. O Prophet, rose the believers to fight and kill. But Islam is peace, remember. If there are 20 among you, patient and preserving, they will vanquish 200. Okay. So Allah, He wants the Muslim to kill as much as they can. And He told them, okay, well, listen to this. 20 of you can kill 200 from Christians and Jews or Hindus. The Muslim they went to the battle to fight and they lost. They came back, and Muhammad he heard the news. The Muslims are got busted, but he just told them that twenty of you will vanquish two hundred. 
Hello. So right away, Muhammad, he abrogated the first verse by a new verse. And look what the verse here it says. For the present, brother, Allah has lightened your task, and he knows that there is weakness spot on you. But even so, if there are a hundred of you, a patient and preserving, uh, they will vanquish uh, 200. Like, hold on, hold on. Hold on. A second ago, you told them that 20 can fight 200. 20 can fight 200. Happy Easter, my friend. Thank you. Happy Easter, all everybody, and happy Easter to our murder, the one today being slaughtered in Sri Lanka. They are with the living Lord, they are not dead, my friend. Don't be sad, they are living, they are rejoicing with the Lord. Our sadness is only for their family, but not for them. Never a cry for a believer, he died or he killed. For he is a living with the Lord. He is in the best place. He is in a better hand. He is in a better location. He have a better life. But we cry only for their family because always, you know, when something happened to you, the one who will hurt most is your family. But not you. Now we go back to our topic. Here you see Muhammad, how he manipulate. His followers saying to them, Allah told me that 10 of you can fight 100. The Abdul, they went to war and they got busted. And they found that Muhammad is nothing but a scam. How you say to them that one can fight 10 and then Allah now he knew that you have a weakness? Or are you telling me you do not know they have a weakness before? Thank you for all those who say Happy Easter, and uh, I appreciate your support. Any Muslim can tell me what happened. So you hear the abrogation. There's no abrogation. It's a lie. It is a guy who cannot fulfill his prophecy, and he always, he make mistakes, and then he try to fix it, and they call it abrogation. Are you getting my point? It's it's a way to fix mistakes. How Muhammad now will explain that Allah He says ten of you will vanquish against a hundred. A hundred will vanquish a thousand. They lost. In different chapter in the Quran, Muhammad became or become more funny. The funny prophet. I mean, he's of his funny. Look at this. In chapter 2, verse 106, Muhammad he said the following and try not to laugh. None of our revelation do we abrogate or cause to be forgotten, but we substitute something better or similar. Have you ever heard of something stupid more than this before? Allah, he make verses, and now he will make better verses? <laughs> Allah will make Quran better than the Quran of Allah? You know what I mean? Have you ever imagine imagine Jesus saying any of the verses I say to you I will make verses later better <laughs> uh, nowhere to compare between the amazing wisdom of the Lord the Messiah and this is stupidity but what happened here is very simple Muhammad he cannot recite his lie twice correctly you know a liar like I can understand if somebody uh, telling a story uh, from long time ago, maybe he missed some details, 
uh, maybe he is you know he caught the wrong age or the year you know it happened human being have a short memory but we are talking about somebody he just delivered a verse from God and yet he cannot recite it again so Muhammad to explain why he cannot recite the verse which given to him by Allah and the Muslim they say oh Quran is preserved brother what do you mean Quran is preserved the Quran saying the Quran is forgotten the Quran saying the Quran was forgotten so how the Quran is preserved and the Quran saying the Quran is caused to be forgotten I mean who is the donkey here We will talk about why Allah he that it's use we after we finish this remind me So here you notice Muhammad was trying to cover his ass Why he forget Quran? He want to give excuse. Okay, don't worry Allah told me brother that any Quran I forgot Allah will give me something better and even similar Okay, and now the Muslim is relaxed Aha uh -huh. So, okay, no problem. Allah will give you something better, but Allah caused you to forget the Quran. Allah caused you to forget the Quran? Why, why God want to make you forget the word of God? Hello? Have you ever heard of a God? He sent the word of God, and he caused you to forget the word of God. Do we have any Abdul in the bushes? <clears throat> However, in different verse in the Quran, it says that the one who make you forget the Quran is Shaitan. <laughs> is that right? <laughs> I mean, what I can say about such a stupid cult? If we go to the front verse, let us go. I think uh, six sixty-eight, something like this. Yeah, here we go. Allah, He gave you Quran. If you forget the Quran, that's from Satan, brother. Do you see it, people? So how Allah says that He is the one who make you forget the Quran in different verses says Shaitan make you forget the Quran. Here, Muhammad, he made this verse. Anyone understand what the target of this verse? The target of this verse that Muslim will not sit and listen to someone like Christian Prince. So if somebody try or he start exposing Muhammad Go away and don't stay with them because this is an order from Allah and if you If you did not follow the order that's because shaitan he made you forget the Quran You see how evil Muhammad is he don't want people to hear anyone exposing him So now a Muslim, he listened to me for two minutes, he will remember this verse, he will bingo, he will leave. So he will not listen and he will not learn the truth. Now, we have one of you, he asked a question about why Allah, he say we. Well, I have a bigger problem from we. The Muslim, they say that Allah, he says, we because he is majestic but that's not right i mean he is majestic but still in the quran he says it is he how it is he is explained
אני אמרתי להם? You tell us that he says it is we because he speak like a king which is funny because Allah trying to resemble a king and he make himself majestic by language coming copying the way of a human being who is proud about himself that is not even decent and then Allah he says it is he I hold a question here is getting the problem getting bigger if Allah is talking how he say it is he Any Muslim can't tell us? Allah is talking. He say it is He. Okay, I want to talk about myself, guys, and let me switch to the language of Allah. It is He, Christian Prince, uh, who is talking to you, and it is He. By the way, I will. Uh, he will make a live broadcast after a few hours. But you are a Christian Prince. That will make you look stupid. Here you notice that the author of the Quran, he always forget to switch from between him talking and God talking. Remember, Quran is not a book supposedly written by a prophet about God. It is a book God is speaking in it, not a prophet, which means supposedly it's not a single word from the prophet. All is from Allah. How can you reject the faith of Allah in Allah? Allah saying how you can reject the faith of Allah in Allah. Who are you? Muslims, any Muslim in the bushes? How Allah He says how you can reject the faith in Allah. He is Allah. And things get more complicated <clears throat> where Allah He said that if Allah want to take a partner, He will take it from the black eyed women and the virgin. Do we have any Muslim would like to call me? If you are a Muslim and you claim a knowledge, please let me know. If it had been our wish, this is the Muslim translation, to take a pastime, we should surely take it from the things nearest to us, fast translation. It doesn't say that. It says from ourself, this is Yusuf Ali. Let's switch to different donkey. Maybe we can find somebody honest for a second. What nearest to us, you liar? Uh huh. Look, we just changed the translator, the Quran changed. And this is a proof that the Muslims always they corrupt their book because corrupting the translation, false translation is a false Quran. Had we intended. To take a pastime, i.e., a wife or a son, etc. What do you mean, etc.? <laughs> we could surely have taken it from us. Okay, that's more accurate translation. Hold on. Allah, when He say we, you Muslim, you say this is majestic, but now Allah want to take a wife from we. What does that mean? Do we have any Abdul? Allah saying he want to take a wife from we, from ourself, from us, us. When we say to Muslims us, they say because Allah is majestic, brother. Okay. Allah will marry himself. What does that mean? Allah will turn to be a shemale, something like this. If Allah is one, and we does not mean a pearl name of Allah. It's about the stem. He's a majestic. But here he's saying, we intended to take a pastime, i.e. wife or a son, etc. We could surely have taken it from us. 
us who? Who is a Muslim Abdul? When I explain to us, Mr. Us here. See guys, why I'm not married? Because I want to marry from us. This is what Allah is saying. The reason, brother, that Allah is still single, brother, because Allah is going to marry from us, a brother, but Allah is one God, brother, who is us. Hmm? Bad boy, bad boy, what you gonna do? What you gonna do when us come to you? Bad boys, bad boys. Us? Hey, Allah is us? Hey, nice to meet you, Mr. Us. Here we go. We have a new name for Allah. Now, guys, do you remember what chapter we are reading? How many of you remember? Let us see how many of you listening carefully. What chapter we are reading? <clears throat> Nobody remember. Ah, Allah made you forget the Quran. All right, chapter 21. Chapter 21, verse number 17. Okay, Hector, he just get here. So Hector is don't don't uh, don't chase Hector. Don't ask him why he don't remember. He just get here. Come on, Hector. But this is not the first time I mentioned this before. I mean, I mentioned it many times, so you should know it by now. Remember this verse, guys. This is a very important verse to get the Abdul busted about claiming that Allah is one. So when they say Allah is one. And by the way, this is a better translation from the rest. It's the translation of Hali and Khan. Hali, let me show you the name of the translation. Halili, Halili, Halili and Khan. All right, you see the translation name? Okay. And this is the link. Let me give you the link. So maybe you can save it in your reference. And wait for my translation for the Quran. I'm working in it. So Muslims, Allah want to take a wife from us. What do you say? How many of you using the phone to uh, to listen to our program? Let us see how many of you using the phone, how many using the computer. I think the majority are using their phones these days, right? Like it's easier, more convenient. How many of you are in the bed? <laughs> Man, it's getting cold, the freezing here. I mean, we are in April 21st, and it is two degree. I mean, two degree. And in the morning, we have a little snow. April 21st. Mean. Phone, 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 phone. Yeah, I got it. I got it. Most of you phone. All right. Mm. <clears throat> mm, hold on. I'm getting really cold. <clears throat> Talking about cold, you guys remind me of a true story told me told to me by Prophet Muhammad that when he went to Brazil and he was fishing in Alaska River in Brazil and the snow was all over, a big bear from Brazilian Alaska, he came to the Prophet and the Prophet said to him, if I give you a fish, are you going to say Shahada? The bear, he was an Alaskan bear from Brazil. And by the way, Alaskan bears originally they are from Arabia and they speak Arabic. So the bear he said to the Prophet, I will say shahada, but give me the fish first. The Prophet he told him, No, you say shahada, I will give you the first second. The bear he said, Okay, look like there's no choice. So he said shahada. After he said shahada, the Prophet said to him, You will get the fish in heaven, not here. Sorry. And until now the poor bear is waiting for the fish and this is what happened for every Muslim 
they are waiting for 72 naked fish in the heaven at least well let me know when you get your fish Abdul you will never have it by the way we are Arab we are the best in geography and we learn geography from Allah anyone remember something about geography from Allah uh, I know many of you will mention to me that the sun set in murky water, but this is not geography. This is science, different story. Look at this geography, brother. Chapter 55, verse 19. Chapter 27, verse number 61. Chapter 25, verse number 53. Chapter 18, verse number 60. We will take 1860. Now, here is speaking about two seas. Anyone knows what two seas we are talking about? Anyone knows? How many of you have my books, uh, like Quran and Science and Depth? And if you have them, you will see, I, I, I know. I mentioned those stupid stories there and I have the reference for them. Let's open the Middle East map. Because now you will be amazed by the wisdom of the Prophet and Allah. And for sure the Muslims too. The scholars. All right. <clears throat> so in chapter 18 verse number 60 is speaking about two seas who they merge together there's two seas they met together who knows what two seas Allah is speaking of in the Middle East Yeah, thank you. Here we go. See what is name? Allah, the one kafir, he got it right. Allah, the one kafir, he said he is the winner. He is the winner. Uh, Allah, the one kafir. Uh, I, I just received a message from Zabril, uh, and Zabril, Zabril, he said he, you 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 receive your fish in the <laughs> in Allah, uh, Brazilian Alaska. <laughs> so the Persian seas meet with the Mediterranean. Can you believe it? I mean, since when the Persian Sea they met it met with the Mediterranean? Allah is all knowledgeable, brother. And if Allah He says it met, it met. I mean, come on. It must be true. I mean, you cannot deny the wisdom of Allah. Right? Do we have any Muslim here? You have an objection? Any Muslim have an objection for what uh, uh, Kafir he said? Nobody? I mean, I'm really disappointed. So, according to the smart Muhammad and his religion, Moses was sent by Allah to learn from a guy his name is Al Khadr. Al Khadr in Arabic mean who remember Mr. Green. Mr. Green. So Moses was here. Let us draw a line. Moses was here in Israel. And then Allah he sent him for job training. Job training. We're here. And Allah told him that you will find, you will find Al Khadr where the two seas meet. According to Allah and the Muslim scholars, the two seas are the Mediterranean and the Persian Gulf. And as you see, they can meet. 
They meet always. Do we have any Abdul? Have any uh, comment? Uh, Hamdi, uh, the language you use in your uh, mosque is not allowed here. Say, say hello to Allah. That is the wisdom of Allah. And by the way, chapter 18 in the Quran is one of the most funny, stupid chapters ever you can ever read. And by the way, for those who do not know, the Quran claim that there is two seas in this earth. One sea is a sea which is salty and one sea which is a fresh who's a Muslim here he agree that there is two seas one is salty and one is a fresh and they will never meet your Skype and pal talk is not open are you a Muslim are you a Muslim why you want to open it if, uh, if it's not if nobody want to talk to me if you are a Muslim you want to call me I will open pal talk for you all right if you want to say text me i don't want to open it because that will slow my internet do you really muslim believe that there is two seas one is salty and one is a fresh and they will never meet the muslims they have an article saying this is scientifically proven to be true salty water and fresh water they don't mix that's stupid to say but a cup of water with cup of salt cup of salty water fresh water with salty water you will see they will mix in a second this is not what the science says secondly this is have nothing to do with what you claim this is your God claiming that the fresh water is a body totally divided from the salty water and they never mix Anyone? And there is a complete barrier between them. You see the Muslim when they try to make a false article saying to you, oh, this is about the sea, the river sea and the uh, salty sea. They are not mixing. They are mixing. This is number one. Number two, it's not about that. The Quran, Muhammad, because he's a fool, he think the reason we have a fresh water because Allah forbid the fresh water from mixing with the salty water. So there is two seas. They dig in the ground. They hear water running. They grab water from the ground. So they believe there is a sea under the ground. And that is a fresh water sea. And Allah divided between the fresh water sea and the salty sea. So they will never ever met. And by the way, it's not me who is saying that. You can read the interpretation of the scholars too. No, they cannot say because we can get them busted and we show them what the scholars they say. And by the way, when you say a Muslim scholar, it means is a certified, certified idiot. That's what a scholar mean. Even according to the Quran, a scholar is someone who say I agree. I believe not somebody he knows do we have any Muslim have a comment why i need muslims only to talk to me because this is a topic about islam and i want the christians to learn how to answer muslims talking to you will not make any difference for me you are a christian already aren't you so my topic is about the cult of islam so it's very normal that i want muslims to call me 
for many reasons number one maybe we can save them and take them out of this cult number two you learn how the Muslim they asked you what they asked you learn how to answer them so why I want to talk to you there's many uh, programs Christians talking you know join them right you don't have to stay here my friend if you like to speak about the Bible there's many ch ch channels they just st speak about the I don't like to mix between garbage and Holy Word of God here my specialty is garbage I cannot promise you something better sorry Many of the Christians today, they can refute Muslims easy because of our videos. So if I am a person, okay, there's a thousands and thousands of people speaking about the gospel, making speeches about the, the Holy Lord. That's wonderful. But still, Christians need to learn how to answer cults. It's extremely important, not only to go to the church and you say, okay, I pray to Jesus, but you need to learn. Jesus himself, he was the best debater. He was debating the Jews. He came to them. He says, what do you say of Christ? They said, he's the son of David. This is a debate. He's, he is the one who started the debate with them. He said, if he is the son of David, then how David call him Jehovah? That is a debate, my friend. So now we learn the logic of the Jews and we learn the logic of the Messiah from the debate. So learning from a debate is a lot more powerful than learning from a speech. I have thousands and thousands of videos of debating with Muslims and learn from it. Same time, one of the reasons actually I stopped using Skype because you Christians, you keep sending me messages useless. I mean, hi, are you Christian Prince? I mean, I, I cannot, I cannot open my Skype. It's like a, like a, like a bomb. You know, text is coming from everywhere. So I, how I can talk to Muslims? I made this a Skype show. I can talk to the Muslims. If everybody says to me, hello, how are you? I'm going to answer him, say, I'm fine, thank you. I will spend the, the, the rest of my life just saying answering. But this is not the purpose of me to be here. You remind me of an Arab guy from my family. He went first time to the movie uh, in Saudi Arabia, brother, there's no now, suddenly now we have a, a movie in Saudi Arabia. He went to the movie first time ever. He never saw a movie theater before. By the time he finished saying "Assalamu alaikum," the movie was over. Because we have a tradition, we have to shake hands, you know. So he got in the movie, he said "Assalamu alaikum," "Assalamu alaikum," "Assalamu alaikum," "Assalamu alaikum," "Assalamu alaikum." Sit down, idiot. We're gonna watch the movie. "Assalamu alaikum." By the time he finished Assalamu Alaikum, the movie was over. Now he have to pay again and come back again, but then again he have to say Assalamu Alaikum. So don't do the same. All right. Anything else? Yeah, don't curse don't curse back if the Muslims curse you don't curse back my friend be be you see be the be the ambassador of Christ if you if you know how many Muslims make videos attacking me calling me names making a threat I, I am relaxed you know for, for inside me I have the comfort of the Lord they're cursing their death a threat it does not it's not a threat for me they are threatening themselves you see when somebody he threat you it's mean he is feeling threatened. It's not the opposite. You know what I mean? A person who threat you, he is the one who feel insecure. It's not you. Otherwise, ask yourself why he's threatening you. But because he feel insecure, so he think by threatening you, he will gain security. Their terrorism is not because they feel safe and secure but because they themselves they don't feel secure with Islam
a person who don't feel secure he look around him and he think everybody around him is an enemy because inside him he don't have peace everybody is an enemy you don't when you walk in the street you don't see people you see you see uh, you see enemies because you don't have security and that is exactly what Islam is about Islam make you believe that you are a target of conspiracy of every individual shaitan the fleas the the lies lies Allah send dice on people just because they, you know because the lies are Muslims but Allah he sent them against shaitan shaitan is appointed by Allah is that correct Shaitan is someone appointed by Allah uh, to be your enemy. <clears throat> All verses in the Quran speaking about Shaitan, proving to us that Islam is very silly. <clears throat> I think I'm losing my voice. In chapter 6 verse number 112 and actually I want you to remember this verse because this verse is very important Allah appointed to every prophet shayateens satans so who is satan if if Allah appointed satan satan he worked for Allah it's obvious right if I say to you, I appointed a driver for you to drive you crazy, <laughs> not a taxi driver. That's mean this driving crazy person is obeying me. Do we agree? If Allah is the one who appoints Satan to attack us, that means Satan is just an employee. The real Satan is Allah because Allah is the one who appoints Satan not the opposite satan is not coming with a free will to be against you he is just doing and obeying allah and the verse in the front of you i'm not making things up chapter 6 verse 112 and this is your muslim translation so if allah is the one who appoints shaitan so who is shaitan the true shaitan is allah which means this verse they're saying to us there's a little shaitan and big shaitan the little shaitan is the one who come to me sent by the bigger shaitan which is Allah correct <clears throat> do we have any Muslim in the chat <clears throat> even though I'm losing my voice See, this is what happened when you sing Quran in the shower. I will never sing Quran in the shower. I sing Quran in the shower, the hot water stop. Never do that. Because Allah will appoint shaitan to me in the shower. Do you know that Allah, he appointed shaitan to Muslims in the bathroom? No, this is a chapter 6 verse 112 do you know that Allah he appointed the shaitan to the Muslims in the bathroom when a Muslim he entered the bathroom according to Muhammad Allah appointed shaitan to target him and target his anus specifically his anus so the Muslim you know a Muslim by the way a Muslim man should not sleep in his belly anyone knows why any anyone knows why Guys, why you keep saying 111, 111? What is 111? What, why people they are saying 111? 111 what? This verse was 112. Why you keep saying 111? <laughs> What's wrong, guys? Lou, it's 112. Chapter 6, verse 112. Why you are saying 111? I have no idea. Now, when you go in the bathroom, if you don't say inshallah, the shaitan which is appointed by Allah, he will put a, a, a screwdriver in your anus. 
if you don't believe me there's a video on YouTube a Muslim scholar he is explaining what happened to you if you don't say the prayer before you enter the bathroom shaitan and his wife they will put a screwdriver in your anus and not only that he explained to you like you go to the bathroom you think it's going to take five minutes and then you are pushing eh, 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 and it's not coming why because shaitan is playing in your bowels playing your bowels brother I'm not joking go and watch the video <laughs> I wish I can play it for you you would die laughing but they will they will claim copyright over it Islam is a super so you know stupid religion you have to say a certain prayer look you see those guys they think I'm joking hold on let me grab the video for you from YouTube I mean, what I would do with those infidels? They don't believe me. <clears throat> All right. Search for this video as you see in the screen. You will see the shake. This is the name. Say it, Islam, Satan farts and plays with your with, plays with your butt. This is not posted by me. I mean, somebody copy my videos and post it. So watch the video. Actually, the video is longer than this. Let me look for another one. Hold on. Yeah, uh, you can you can look for this one. Oh, this one is short too. I don't know what happened to the long video. I'm looking for the original one. I'm trying to find the original one. Hold on. Uh, I don't know. I cannot find the original one. I mean, the long one. Uh, but maybe you can you can look for it yourself. I don't know what the name will be But this is the this is the guy you will see in the video this image here Anyway, this guy here uh, He explained to you how shaitan he play with your bows when you go in the bathroom if you don't say the prayer of Allah But if you say the prayer of Allah You will become invisible for shaitan. It's like we're in the, uh, the what they call it. This is the magical hat That is what Islam is about. Conspiracy and stupidity and superstition. And yet they say to us, Allah is God. Do we have any Muslim who don't agree? And look, here there's two Muslims, brother. They are explaining to you shaitan farting. Look, look. Do you see the video name? Hadith explained Satan breaking winds. The Muslim, I mean, even this one needs explanation. Look, because it's very embarrassing. So the Muslim, they try to fabricate different explanation. The Hadith is so clear. It's very easy to understand. You do not need explanation. If the hadith in the explanation, so what Muhammad was doing, he was explaining to Muslim what shaitan do. Why you need to explain it? This is the hadith. Let us find it. Why you need to explain this hadith? Satan, here is the call of uh, of the prayer. When uh, the Prophet said, when shaitan he hear the call of the prayer. He turned his back and he break winds so he will not hear it even this one you need the interpretation now hmm? And by the way, this is scientifically to be proven to be true me myself I experience a lot of difficulty when I go inside the mosque in the Middle East it smells so bad 
and I was asking myself is that because the Muslims are farting and no way it was shaitan they say Allah the shaitan fart so there is a connection between Allah name and and farting am I lying Muslims you say Allah he fart he fart you say Allah conjunction there is eternal connection between shaitan farting and Allah name and even shaitan fought and Allah can do nothing about it. Prove me wrong. By the way, why I don't have a smell anything here in my room? There is no fart smell. Where is shaitan? Maybe shaitan is in a vacation or something. How many times I said Allah, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar? Let us see if Shaitan. Uh -huh, I heard something. I mean, we cannot hide the truth. I just heard. Uh -huh, I, I, we heard that. We heard that. You cannot hide the Christians. It was very close to the microphone, actually. Uh, what, Shaitan, Shaitan is here, and obviously Shaitan. By the way, Muslims, do you think Shaitan he eat beans? I mean, where? Where he will get all this farting? You, you, you know, you Muslims are very funny. You say to us, Shaitan is invisible, and yet he, you know, how he, what fart? How he is invisible? I'm, I'm, I don't know. What he eat? Obviously, the beans is doing their job, and that, by the way. Uh, 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 speak to us about a prophecy which is very important prophet Muhammad he predicted global warming but he predicted in different way they say to you cars you know smoke no fart fart is a uh, is a methane you know methanol so farting is biggest reason for a global warming And you tell me the prophet did not know how he how he predicted global warming by by the fault of shaitan shaitan there's 1.4 billion muslims each one of them he he, he pray five times shaitan he have everyone he have two shaitan with him they have to fart five times a day yeah even cow fart cannot uh... i mean cow fart is really disgusting Any one of you he drove next to a cow a cow farm? Man. Do we have an Abdul? All right, guys. I think we have enough for today. Please don't forget to download the video and share it with your friends. And I don't want to finish losing my voice because I feel it so I want to say thank you for everybody thank you for those who support us and our prayer for the families of those who lost their children in uh, in Sri Lanka you know the men and the women and the children because of the crimes and the filth of this God and the name of this God people die every day it's a very filthy cult dangerous cult however Satan cannot win and will never win not even the gate of hell the devil and his kingdom they will never accomplish anything this church the one you see is going to be filled by tomorrow and people will come even more and more and we are here to stay and the Lord is our Lord and if the Lord is with me nobody can be against me or nobody would win go and read history all the apostles of Jesus being slaughtered and because of them and because of the sacrifice and because of the sacrifice of our Lord himself we are Christian today so our blood will be ink the ink for the Bible to be written everywhere will not be gone for nothing Cain us, discriminating us, make us better Christians, 
and make more people accept Christianity for people they witness how beautiful Christianity is and how disgusting the cults of violence and hate anyone who preach hate and violence he is of the devil you do not need to be smart to know it sooner or later you will find out you will find the truth and the truth will set you free so my friend don't be sad for those who've been murdered today for they are with the Lord in his beautiful heaven they die for nothing except they are worshippers of Jesus the Lord he said time will come and people will think by killing you they are doing a favor to God time will come and the prophet and the people they witness for what Jesus said he never said something never happened John 16 these things have I spoken unto you that ye should not be offended they shall put you out of the synagogues yea the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God's service and these things will they do unto you because they have not known the father nor me but these things have I told you that when the time shall come ye may remember that I told you of them and these things I said not unto you at the beginning because I was with you but now I go my way to him that sent me, and none of you asketh me, Whither goest thou? But because I have said these things unto you, sorrow hath filled your heart. Nevertheless I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin, and of righteousness, and of judgment. Of sin because they believe not on me of righteousness because I go to my father and ye see me no more of judgment because the prince of this world is judged I have yet many things to say unto you but ye cannot bear them now Howbeit, when he the spirit of truth is come he will guide you into all truth for he shall not speak of himself but whatsoever he shall hear that shall he speak and he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore said I, that he shall take of mine, and shall show it unto you. A little while, and ye shall not see me. And again, a little while, and ye shall see me, because I go to the Father. Then said some of his disciples among themselves, what is this that he saith unto us, A little while, and ye shall not see me, and again a little while, and ye shall see me, and because I go to the Father? They said therefore, What is this that he saith, A little while, we cannot tell what he saith? Now Jesus knew that they were desirous to ask him, and said unto them, Do ye inquire among yourselves of that I said a little while, and ye shall not see me, and again a little while, and ye shall see me? Verily, verily, I say unto you, that ye shall weep and lament, but the world shall rejoice, and ye shall be sorrowful, but your sorrow shall be turned unto joy. A woman, when she is in travail, hath sorrow because her hour is come, but as soon as she is delivered of the child, she remembereth no more the anguish, for joy that a man is born into the world. And ye now therefore have sorrow, but I will see you again, and your heart shall rejoice, and your joy no man taketh from you. And in that day ye shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. Hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name. Ask, and ye shall receive, that your joy may be full. These things have I spoken unto you in Proverbs, but the time cometh when I shall no more speak unto you in Proverbs, but I shall show you plainly of the Father. At that day, ye shall ask in my name, and I say not unto you that I will pray the Father for you. For the Father himself loveth you, because ye have loved me, and have believed that I came out from God. I came forth from the Father, and am come into the world. Again, 
I leave the world, and go to the Father. His disciples said unto him, Lo, now speakest thou plainly, and speakest no proverb. Now are we sure that thou knowest all things, and needest not that any man should ask to thee. By this we believe that thou camest forth from God. Jesus answered them, Do ye now believe? Behold, the hour cometh, yea, is now come, that ye shall be scattered, every man to his own, and shall leave me alone. And yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Let me do that. I have overcome the world. So time will come, and people will think by killing you they are doing favor. Favor towards God, any God. Their God. They think so. This is something he spoke of, and it's happening and will not stop. Always there is somebody who will think that you are a bad person for a very simple reason, for he follow the devil and he cannot accept your existence. And that's why I say to you that the one who threatened you, he do that because he felt that he is a threaten. So those terrorists, they attack the Christian churches because they themselves, they felt threatened by the peace of a Christ. Christ is a threat. And they think by killing his followers, they can kill a Christ again. But bad news for them, he is a living Lord. And he overcome the world. And he do every day. So thank you everybody for being here. May the Lord bless you. And happy Easter for those who celebrate Easter. And for those who do wait for the calendar, the Eastern calendar, Easter, we will make another day speaking about the Easter day for the Orthodox. And me personally, I believe that the Orthodox calendar is better calendar to celebrate the Easter. However, the Easter for me is nothing to repeat. It's just to memorize. For the Easter happened and it is done. We are not celebrating today Easter. It is celebrated long before Today we are remembering it. That's all. So if it is Western calendar or Eastern calendar will not make really too much different, but I believe the Eastern calendar is better calendar, fit better with the Bible. So thank you very much for being here. And may the Lord bless you. And my prayer for all of you to have a better time with your family and to enjoy the Easter and even to overcome your sorrow and your sadness and your pain if you are sick. If you are unhealthy, if you are poor, all of this is not going to take down your joys. Rejoice is always the same as the Lord. He said, the woman, when she deliver, she have a lot of pain. But the second she have her delivery, the baby between her hand is her rejoice. So you will rejoice and we rejoice every day by him and for him and with him. We are victorious. Thank you very much. Christ is Lord. Islam is false and see you soon again. Take care.